Welcome to JMC VLearning. Today I will be teaching to grade 8, unit 4, Mother Nature. So in this lesson, uh, you will listen to a role play, learn about prepositions and how to make compost. And at the end of the lesson, you can listen to a lovely song about Mother Nature. So let's start the lesson. Okay, this is a role play between Hussein and Kavi. Hussein and Kavi are grade 8 students at Kannangara Mahavidyalaya. Kavi was absent one day and Hussein called him to inform him about the program for their annual trip to Kandy. So two friends called Hussein and Kavi and uh, Kavi was absent one day in school so Hussein gave him a call to inform some things about the annual trip to Kandy. So let's go through it. Hussein, hello, can I speak to Kavin please? Kavin, hello Hussein, I was not feeling well in the morning. That's why I was absent today. Oh, how are you feeling now? Kavin is saying, much better, thanks. That's, a, that's great. By the way, you will be joining us on the trip, won't you? Why not? I am all set to go on the trip. Did you get the itinerary? Hussein says, yes, the bus will leave the school premises at 5.30 in the morning. We were asked to come half an hour early. Kavin says, ah, that means at 5 o'clock. Am I right? Yes. Earlier the better. That's true. By the way, how about our meals? Hussein says, We are asked to bring only breakfast in a lunch box or wrapped in a banana leaf. Lunch will be provided. So, uh, up to here. Okay, if we are going to the first one again. Okay, here. Hussein is calling Kavin and checking why he didn't come to school. So then Kavin is saying he didn't come to school is because he was not feeling well. And then Hussein starts giving the details about the trip. So he says that the bus uh, will leave the school premises at 5.30. But they need to be there half an hour early. So that means the children need to come to school by 5 a.m. in the morning. Kavin is asking, what about the meals? Then Hussein says, uh, the teacher asked to bring only breakfast in a lunch box or wrapped in a banana leaf. And teacher has said that lunch will be provided. We will go to the next part. Kavin is asking, well, anything else? Mm, an extra uniform, a cap, an umbrella and uh, a notebook to write down notes when necessary. All right, is that all? Ah, I forgot to tell you, we were all given a booklet each with details about the places that, were, that we are going to see. So now here, Kavin is asking whether other than the breakfast, whether the teacher asked to bring anything else. Then Hussein is saying, yes, teacher have asked to bring an extra uniform, a cap, an umbrella and a notebook. And also teacher has given a booklet for everyone with the details about the places they are going to visit. Oh, how can I get mine? Don't worry, I have got your copy with me. Okay, thanks. I will ask my father to get it on his way back home from work. Thank you for calling Hussein. Bye. Sure, I will give it to your father. Let me know the time. He is coming here. See you tomorrow morning. Bye. So now this was the conversation between Kavin and Hussein. So let us go to the questions asked from the role play. Uh, if you have the pupils book with you, you can uh, see this in page number 35. So the first one. Kavin didn't go to school because, so uh, if you can remember the role play that we read just few minutes ago, 
in that uh, at the beginning they have said that uh, Hussein called Kavin because he didn't come to school because Kavin was sick or not well. So the answer will be Kavin didn't go to school because he was not feeling well. The second one, they are going on a trip too. So they are asking the place of the trip. So they are going on a trip to Candy tomorrow. The third one, the pupils will leave the school at. Now here there are two times given in the role play. So you have to give the correct time because they are asking what time are they going to leave school. So in the role play they are talking about the time they are supposed to be in school and the time that they will be leaving the school premises. So they should be in school at 5 o'clock in the morning but they will leave the premises at 5.30 in the morning. So here the answer should be the pupils will leave the school at 5.30 in the morning. The teacher asked them to bring, so the teacher asked them to bring few things. We will see what they are. The breakfast, extra uniform, cap and there is a small mistake here. It should be an umbrella and the notebook. Fourth one, sorry, the fifth one. The information given in the booklet is about, so you can remember they spoke about a booklet which the teacher has given. They are asking what is that booklet? It is about the details of the places they will be visiting. We will go to the next question. Read the following words aloud and circle the silent letters. So uh, about silent letters you have learnt in the previous grades. So silent letters are when you, uh, I mean when you pronounce a word, there are some letters which will not be pronounced, which you will not pronounce. Like now here in this word half, we say half. We do not say half. So here the letter L, the letter L is called a silent letter. Even in the next one, our. So it is said as H O U R. Normally we use H as her. We do not say hover, we say our. So here H is silent. Third one, rep. We say rap. So you will hear R A P or a F -a is sound but not the W. So W is the silent letter in that word. Even here, right. When you say right, only R I T E is pronounced but not the W. So the W is silent. The final word, no. Even here, you will pronounce only N O W but not the K. So, K is the silent letter in this word. Okay, so now we will go to our next part about prepositions. Okay, prepositions. So, uh, you have to know what are prepositions. Even in the lower grades, you have learnt about prepositions. We speak about uh, on, in, under. Uh, at words like that we have learned that they are prepositions. So to uh, remember or to revise the lesson again, uh, I will tell you what are prepositions. Prepositions are words that we use before nouns or pronouns to so show their relationship with other words in a sentence. So once again, prepositions are words that we use before nouns. So we are talking about before nouns or pronouns to show their relationship with other words in a sentence. So I will explain it to you. Now here see the first example, I am sitting on a chair. I am sitting on a chair. The word chair is the noun in this sentence. The word chair is the noun in this sentence. So they are saying a preposition is placed before a noun. So here 
on is the preposition. So, here on the preposition on is placed before the noun. We will go to the next one. I am walking to her. Here her, the word her is the pronoun in the sentence. Her is the pronoun in the sentence. So, again they say that a preposition is placed before a pronoun. So, to is the preposition and it is placed before the pronoun. So, remember prepositions are words that we use before nouns or pronouns to show their relationship with other words in a sentence. Right? So, there are prepositions of location, direction and time. So, in this lesson you will be learning about prepositions of direction. So, turn to page number 42 in your pupils book. Now, I told there are so many prepositions. These prepositions speak about the direction over, here they have showed over, jump over the fence, around, walk around the house, through, this is a tunnel so we can say go through the tunnel, along, walk along the road, walk along the road, over, so here walk over the river here, over, up and down, climb up the mountain and come down the mountain, into, so this is a cave, go into or walk into the cave, across, you can see it shown from arrow, across and under, under the bridge. So, these are, these prepositions are used to talk about the direction. Now, if you can go to the next activity in your pupils book, they have given you a picture like this and have given you the sentences not in order and they are asking you to put them in order. So, now we have to see one by one how is this boy going, how is he going to pass this way and go to whatever the place that he has to uh, go or reach, right. So, we will go, it will be easy for you. The first one is start your journey from A and walk along the road, start your journey from A and walk along. So, here we are using the preposition along, right. So, now this person is walking from A, walking along the road, ok. Now, we have stopped here, right. Now, we will go to the next one. The second sentence should be then jump over the fence and run across the field. Then jump over the fence and run across the field. Jump over the fence and run across the field. Okay, so now see, start your journey from A and walk along the road, jump across the fence and run across the field. Now, we are here. So, the third sentence should be jump over the fence again and walk slowly through the tunnel. Jump over the fence again and walk slowly through the tunnel. Jump over the fence again and walk slowly through the tunnel. So, now we are here. The next one. 
After that, walk around the farm and go under the little bridge. Walk around the farm and go under the little bridge. Walk around the farm and go under the little bridge. So now we are here. Next one. Then you can see a big bridge and walk over it. You can see a big bridge and walk over it. So now here this is the bridge. You have to walk over it. Then you will come here. Okay, now if we go again, start your journey from A and walk along the road. Jump over the fence and run across the field. Jump over the fence again and walk slowly through the tunnel. After that, walk around the farm and go under the little bridge. Then you can see a big bridge and walk over it. Go to the next one. Next, climb up the hill and come down. So, climb up the hill. This is up the hill and come down. Okay, so they say climb up the hill and come down. Now we are here. Prepositions up and down. After that, go through the dark forest. Go through. Here you can see a forest. They are asking you to go through the dark forest. And now we are here. Walk into the cave carefully. So now this boy has reached the cave. So he they are asking to walk into the cave, into the cave carefully. So now see the prepositions. They have used along, over, across, through, under, around, up, down, into. So to, uh, to talk about direction. They have directed this boy to the cave. So this is how you should use uh, prepositions in this lesson. Okay, now the next part is about the plural forms of collective nouns. So if you can remember in grade 7 you learnt about collective nouns. Now in grade 8 in this lesson you will be learning about the plural form of the collective noun. So in your pupils book in page number 44 you will get this part. This is the singular uh, collective noun and here on this side you can see the plural form of the collective noun. The first one is a group of boys, a group of boys. So we are talking about only one group. So how are we going to give the plural form of the uh, of so many groups. So this word group becomes groups. If you can see groups of boys. Again here the second one. A flock of birds. So same way again the flock becomes flocks of birds. A herd of elephants. So the word herd becomes herds of of elephants. So this this word becomes plural. That is how you write the plural form of the collective noun. We will go to this. A bunch of keys. So now what do you think? What is the plural form of this? A bunch of keys. So here again like I said bunch becomes or we write the plural form of bunch and it becomes bunches of keys. Bunches of keys. A pack of cards. A pack of cards. So the plural form of this is packs cards, packs of cards. 
so for you to learn more about uh, the plural form of collective nouns i have uh, uh, taken a few more examples a group of dancers a group of dancers so it becomes group becomes groups of dancers a choir of singers so choir becomes choirs of singers a class of students so class becomes classes of students a crew of sailors crews of sailors so here you can see this word has become plural a team of players teams of players a gang of prisoners gangs of prisoners a swarm of bees swarms of bees so this is how you write the plural form of the collective now i think you would have understood how to write it so uh, now we will go to the next activity of how to make compost so if you turn to page number 44 again in your book you will see uh, there is activity let's make compost so they have given you some pictures and uh, the steps are not in order there are five steps but the steps are not in order and they want you to write them in order so as a help i am ready to give you the order okay the first step so now you can see this is how to make compost this is they have uh, made up some wooden uh, cages or boxes uh, we'll see how it's done the first step is add inoculants to increase the decomposition of raw materials so here there are two new words i think for you one is inoculants the next one is decomposition so inoculants are materials used in the process of decay then deco decomposition is the process of decay so the first one is the materials used in the process of decay the next one is the process of decay is called decomposition so the first step is add inoculants to increase the decomposition of raw materials we we'll go to the next picture then fill in the cage or barrel with different raw materials such as green leaves weeds banana leaves and trunks salvinia sawdust vegetable peels crop waste and animal waste so these are the things you can uh, mix or add uh, to make your compost what are they you can use uh, green leaves weeds banana leaves uh, and the trunk of the banana tree uh, salvinia sawdust vegetable peels or any crop waste or animal waste so all that you need to put into the uh, barrel into this barrel so here the picture shows the things that they add into the barrel the third step add water regularly so you need to after adding all this you need to add water regularly okay the fourth step cover the cage or barrel with coconut fronds or suitable covering material and maintain the moisture inside so you need to make the barrels add all the materials the raw materials into the barrel then add water regularly finally you need to cover the barrel with a covering material or even with coconut 
fronds. Finally, collect produce compost from the bottom of the cage or barrel. So, I know these days uh, practically you are doing this at home. So, because of the uh, COVID-19, uh, most of us got used to planting and then uh, making our own compost. So, if you have not made your own compost, I think uh, this will help you how to do it. So, I think it is clear enough for you, uh, you can uh, do the activity by yourself. Now, we will go to the next activity that is a, a nice activity which we are talking about mother nature. So, uh, again I would say due to COVID-19 we spoke a lot about our nature uh, because of our uh, active activities uh, we actually neglected our nature. So, and it was time that we should attain or give our awareness uh, to mother nature. So, from this song everything explains how you should protect mother nature. Let us enjoy the song. Mother nature needs us. So, it is 
please keep it in your mind till we meet in the next lesson bye for now